All right, let's jump into this, or should I say dash into this? I don't know. That doesn't quite sound right. Anyway, so we're going to open up our player controller, our player movement script. Sorry, player movement. And the first thing that we need for doing the dash is we're going to need to get our movement direction. So, um, and we've got kind of a lot of code here. So let's get first our jump into a method. So what we could do is select all of our jump code. And then we're going to right click and do quick actions and refactorings. And we'll extract this to a new method. Just call this execute jump and apply. And then we can minimize that method for execute jump. For our move player, we need the movement direction to be stored up top as a global variable so that way we can get this on another script. So we're going to take this movement direction variable and come up to the top here. And we're just going to do a public vector three, put movement direction here. And because this is the vector three data type is specified up here in our move player, we can go ahead and delete that and save our script. Over in Unity, we're going to go ahead and right click in our scripts folder and create a new C sharp script. This one we're going to call dash third person and hit enter and open up that script. I'm going to go ahead and delete these comments here. And first thing that we need is a variable for our player movement script. So we'll do the type, data type is player movement, and because that's the name of the script class. And we're just going to call this move script because it's a little bit shorter rather than saying player movement. And then in our start, we need to take that variable and get the component. We want to get the actual player movement script. Go ahead and save that as we're going through. Alrighty, and then we're going to need to create a couple more variables. So we'll do a serialized field, and we'll do a float, and this one is going to be for our dash speed. How fast are we dashing? Uh, for right now, we can just do uh, 30F. And then we'll do another serialized field float. And we're also going to have the dash duration. So this will be how fast we're going and then for how long. And we'll set that to 0.2f. All right, so in update, what we're going to do is we're going to get create a condition if. And if you press insert by accident, you'll get this gray box, which we don't want that will replace whatever's highlighted. So we'll just click insert to turn that back off. And then the condition is if we get our mouse button, mouse button down. And the specific mouse button that we want is the 
uh, clicker our left click, so that's zero. And if we click the mouse button, we want to dash, right? And so we're going to create a coroutine similar to a method but different we're going to create a coroutine that will will run every time for when we want to dash so we'll first go ahead and create a coroutine anytime you create a coroutine it's going to be i enumerator and we're going to call this dash so similar setup to a method and it kind of throws a fit at the moment so what we can do now is go ahead and say hey if you click the mouse button we want to start that coroutine capital S capital C and you can see we get the default here the template right this is a, to start coroutine, you can put the string method name in parentheses that you're calling. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we just put dash. And then it's like a method, similar, but with the same thing with the coroutine. We have to put dash parentheses, right, which is also... The whole thing is in parentheses, so it kind of looks a little weird. We put our semicolon there, and then we'll save this. So next up is we are going to create just a local variable inside our dash coroutine, and this is going to be the start time. And we're going to assign that the time.time, .time, which is the time in the game, or the time at the beginning of this frame. So this will give us the time in seconds since the start of the game. And then we're going to create a while uh, loop, essentially. This is a while statement. So this will be while the time dot time is less than the start time plus the dir dash duration so while this is true basically it will then run what's in our curly braces now. So while this condition is true, this is like our guardian, so the time has to be less than the start time plus the dash duration. So this will be each time we dash after the duration of seconds, point it'll then um, turn off. So we'll go ahead and get our, to actually do the actual dash to be dashing or dash dash around we first need to get our move script right which is from the player controller that's the player movement script and we're going to get the character controller which we can just simply put uh, controller and then ooh, and then we get an error because it's inaccessible due to its protection level which means it's private so we need to go to our player movement script and we'll go to our character controller here here we go and it's private so we'll go ahead and do uh, public and save this go back to our third person and now if we put dot we can do capital move, which is getting our move method from the character controller. And then parentheses, right, we put our parameters for the movement. So we need to get the movement direction, so we have to type in 
the move script dot in the variable, which is the movement direction. That's our variable that we created. So back in our player movement script, you can see right our movement direction, right? That's getting the movement based on our horizontal and vertical inputs. That way we know which which direction do we want to dash. Well, we have to get the movement direction. Then we times that by our dash speed, and we'll times that by time dot delta time. That will give us the seconds. So now, after that, this while loop, we're going to then end it with the yield return null. We're not returning any values or anything like that for the, that case. So we save that, and you'll notice our error goes away because we finished our coroutine instructions. So no, no red line anymore. So we can save this, and back in Unity now, we need to select our player. And we'll drag our dash third person script onto the player. And I tested this before 30 was not very high. So I'm going to just try 100. And the dash duration I want to be maybe just a little bit shorter um, time wise. So we'll try 0 0.06. So we'll save that. And then let's test it out. Whoa! So maybe be careful where we're dashing in the level. Okay. Well, so much for that. I guess let's uh, let's try thirty. Maybe just point one for right now. And you can see when you write your code, you'll have to test it out. Wow, that was super fast. Woohoo! So that's uh, that's some dashing right there, some dashing fun. So dash speed. So the duration, how long are we dashing? So point 0.1 is maybe, yeah, too much. So point, uh, zero 0.05. Whoops. We want it to be a short distance, but not too short. It's really zipping across there. I think maybe I'll tone down the dash speed to 25. And So eventually we want to be able to dash through some enemies. So, so you kind of play with these settings. We don't want the dash to be too long either. We want the dash to be short, but not too short and fast. So that way we can dash through enemies, but we don't want it to be ridiculous long where it just feels a little crazy. So anyway, uh, mess with the settings around just in case if you have a different jump height or speed for your player as well, which will affect it. Um, you can set those and play test around until you get a good feel for it. After play testing for a little bit, I decided on the settings for going a dash speed of 12 and it lasting 0 0.01. Right, and so I like that it's got a decent distance, but it's not too far or too fast. Right, and then player speed at 5 with 720 rotation speed. So that's for the dash. And then I felt like the camera was just a little bit uh, too close 
to the player. So I also went to my free look camera and we have our, our rigs here. What I did was the orbits. So I changed the middle rig to be 4.24 and a radius of 7.4. So that's how far the camera is right now. So it's a little bit further away and higher up just a little bit. And then I did my top rib just at eight uh, radius and just a little bit higher, 5.7. So, and I may even go to 8.5 radius maybe, but that's kind of where I have it set now that felt and looked a lot better with the dash. So as we add in some particle effects next and uh, kind of uh, tune our dash, uh, we may even want to change the camera rig a little bit as well, some of the settings to tweak later on.